welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about the vascular tumors and the tumors of the blood vessels now the vascular tumors are mainly graded are divided into three types what are they they are benign tumors benign which means there is a no risk of a cancer okay these are not cancerous benign tumors intermediate risk okay intermediate risk there is a probability that it can turn into cancer and cancerous that is a malignant okay so the blood vessel tumors are divided into how many types three types benign tumors intermediate tumors as well as the malignant tumors so which type of tumors are examples of benign tumors benign tumors includes first type is capillary capillary hemangiomas which are the most common type and second type includes the cavernous hemangiomas cavernous hemangiomas and third type includes the glomangiomas okay so capillary hemangioma cavernous hemangioma and glomangioma all these i have given in green color because they are good things they are not cancerous okay they are not cancerous now intermediate risk tumors includes kaposi sarcoma okay kaposi sarcoma and the high risk tumors includes angio sarcoma okay angio sarcoma it is coming under malignant tumor okay malignant tumor or the cancer of the blood vessels now after discussing about the different types of blood vessel tumors or the vascular tumors now let's begin with the first type the benign tumors so what is the first type of benign tumor which we have already discussed the first type of benign tumor is capillary hemangioma okay capillary hemangioma so what are the important points which you need to know regarding the capillary hemangioma it's also called as first point number 1 also called as strawberry hemangioma remember guys strawberry tongue strawberry tongue is seen in kawasaki disease strawberry gingivitis it is seen in wegner's okay strawberry gingivitis it is seen in the wegner's granulomatosis here i am talking about the strawberry hemangioma strawberry hemangioma is nothing but the capillary hemangioma it's a type of capillary hemangioma i should say now what are the most common sites the most common sites which are affected in this condition the most common sites are skin and mucous membranes okay the most common site of this tumor the tumor of the blood vessels the blood vessels are getting the tumor the most common sites are skin as well as the mucous membranes okay you can clearly see on the skin you can have the tumor this is the tumor of the blood vessel this is the strawberry hemangioma okay so these are the strawberry hemangiomas and these tumors they are non capsulated mcq they are non capsulated on biopsy you do not see any capsule over it and whenever a baby is having such kind of a tumors don't worry why because they are regressive okay they will start regressing by 1 to 3 years and they will completely disappear they will completely disappear by 7 years of age okay they will completely disappear by 7 years of age now whenever there is such kind of tumor on the skin you are little worried why because it might be a cancer you are like you no know, cancer growth you might think like this so whenever you do the biopsy you whenever you do the biopsy of the tumor clearly you can see that biopsy is showing a lot of blood vessels all these are the blood vessels how can you say that these are the blood vessels why because you can see a lot of rbc within it okay all these are the blood vessels with a lot of rbcs so on the biopsy what you will see is lot and lot of rbcs with uh, let's say a lot of lot of a lot of blood vessels with the rbc inside it so tell me what are the important points about the capillary hemangiomas capillary hemangiomas also called as the strawberry hemangiomas they are 
most commonly present going uh, they are going, most commonly going to be present on the skin as well as the mucous membranes and they are non capsulated tumors they will disappear they will start regressing by 1 to 3 years of age and by completely they will completely disappear by almost 7 years of age okay now after this let's discuss about the second type that's a cavernous cavernous hemangioma See this cavernous hemangiomas, yes, they are also non capsulated tumors. Okay, they are non capsulated tumors. And what are the most common sites? The most common sites of these tumors are again going to be skin. They are also going to be occur in the liver as well as the central nervous system. So, skin, liver, as well as central nervous system are the sites of this cavernous hemangiomas. Now, this cavernous hemangiomas they are associated with a condition called as Von Hippel Indu syndrome associations associated with Von Hippel Indu syndrome. Okay, see if a person is having this Von Hippel Indu syndrome, the patient is going to have multiple hemangiomas. Okay, the patient is going to have multiple hemangiomas, and those hemangiomas are the cavernous hemangiomas. Later, I will discuss about what is this Von Hippel Indu syndrome. But first of all, these tumors are they going to regress? No, they are not going to regress. Not the regressed. Okay, they are not going to be regressed, which means see the capillary, the first one, the capillary hemangiomas are the junile hemangiomas are the strawberry hemangiomas, they will regress by completely they will regress by seven years of age. But these cavernous hemangiomas they are not going to be regressed. Okay. Now, if you look under the biopsy, what you will see over here is this thick septa. Okay, these thick walled septa are going to be there. Okay, these are something important. They are the, these thick walled septa are going to be there, and all these are the blood vessels. See, you can see all these dots. No, they are all the blood cells. Okay, these are all the blood cells. So a thick septa. Okay, these thick septa are going to be there, and here you can see this is the lumen of the blood vessel with a lot of blood cells RBCs. Okay, so this is what you are going to appreciate. So on microscopy, microscopic examination, blood vessels are seen. And the lumens of the blood vessels are separated by thick septa. Okay, that's the important point which I want you to know. And we have discussed that this uh, cavernous hemangiomas. This cavernous hemangiomas are associated with the von Hippel Indu syndrome. If you ask me, this what what is this von Hippel Indu syndrome? It's very important, especially for the exams. This von Hippel Indu syndrome it is associated with certain types of tumors. Okay, see C A R P E E P car peep, like you know, peeping the car. So, if a, if a patient is having this von Hippel Indu syndrome, okay, v VHL gene mutated, and the patient is having, imagine if I am the one who is having the von Hippel Indu syndrome, I will have see, cerebellar hemangioma. See, hemangiomas, the tumors of the blood vessels are going to be there. Cerebellar hemangiomas, retinal angioblastomas, renal cell carcinoma, pheochromocytoma. See, all these different, different types of tumors. Okay, all these different different types of tumors are going to be seen. One such tumor is our blood cell tumor. Okay, uh, not blood cell tumor, the blood vessel tumor. That's the hemangiomas. So, hemangiomas are associated with the von Hippel Indu syndrome. And that too, which type of hemangiomas? Cavernous hemangiomas. Okay, now after this, see, especially in the nail bed, okay, especially in the nail bed, there is a structure present called as glomus body. Okay, directly. This is the arteriovenous anastomosis. Directly, arteries are going to connect with the veins. Arteries are directly connected with the veins. So, this glomus body, this is a, see, it's a specialized, here it was given, it's a specialized arteriovenous anastomosis. Normally, arteries are there, arteries will be divided into arterioles, capillaries, capillaries will be just connecting to the venules, right? But here it's not like that. The arteries are directly in contact with the veins, okay? So, this is arteriovenous anastomosis. See this arteriovenous anastomosis where it is present, it is present in the subungual regions, uh, means under the nail bed. Okay. So this structure is called as a glomus body. Okay, this structure is called as a glomus body. And what is the function of this glomus body? And the function of this glomus body is thermoregulation. It helps in thermoregulation. Now, whenever it's, it's nothing but a blood vessels, right? these are nothing but the blood vessels. Okay, these are the anastomosing blood vessels. When you are having a tumor of this anastomosing blood vessels, then it is called as glomus tumor. Okay, image-based question. Now, under the nail bed, there is a mass growing. 
okay there is a tumor going so this tumor which is growing under the nail blade it is called as a glomus tumor now what are the important points about this glomus tumor let me write over here see what is the most common site of this glomus tumor the most common site is going to be nail bed okay nail bed is the most common site and is it a painful condition or painless condition it's a very painful condition and from where this tumor is originating the origin the origin of this tumor is glomus body now if you look at the microscopy under the microscopy what you will see see under the microscopy you can have the different different branching of the blood vessels the blood vessels are going to be branched okay the blood vessels are going to be branched with a thick septa you can even see the thick septa okay all these are the lumen of the blood vessels so these are the like you know septa right these are the walls but appreciate in the walls what you will see is different different like you know multiple multiple the cells are there okay multiple multiple cells with the nuclei are there so here i am writing branching of the blood vessels are seen like microscopy branching of blood vessels with monomorphous polygonal cells okay with monomorphous to polygonal cells are seen see here also you can very clearly see these are the walls of the blood vessel with within the walls of the blood vessel you can see multiple multiple cells okay multiple multiple cells are going to be seen the reason why i am telling you this is when you look at the cavernous hemangioma even in cavernous hemangioma you are going to have thick septa okay but the, there is no such thing as uh, monomorphous to polygonal cells no it's not seen here also you can see i have taught you that in cavernous hemangiomas yeah thick wall septa are there even the blood vessels are branching but look here okay look here the blood vessels are branched and in this walls you can see monomorphous to polygonal cells this is the important point which i want you to know so with this glomus tumor is also completed so the three important benign tumors what are the three important benign tumors capillary hemangioma cavernous hemangioma as well as the glomangioma what are the important points capillary hemangioma is also called as a strawberry hemangioma it's a type strawberry hemangioma is a type of uh, capillary hemangioma it is not going to be permanent it will regress completely regress by 7 years second type cavernous hemangioma cavernous hemangiomas are going to be seen on the skin liver as well as the central nervous system but they are non regressive once it's there it's going to be there okay third type it's a glomangioma the glomangiomas are the tumors of the glomus body the glomus body is a specialized arteriovenous anastomosis under the nail bed it's a very painful condition under the microscopy you are going to see a branching of the blood vessels with thick walls with monomorphous to polygonal cells in it okay now after this the intermediate risk a tumor intermediate risk tumor which means it can turn into cancers so these are the kaposi sarcoma see this kaposi sarcoma what are the important points which you need to know is it is associated with hiv infection is seen in hiv individuals are seen in individuals with immuno suppression okay seen in immunosuppression so if you are having immunosuppression if the patient is having immunosuppression then this patients will be infected with a virus called as so whenever the patient is having this immunosuppression now these patients they will get this infection called as h h v 8 okay human herpes 8 virus this human herpes 8 virus is the one which causes this tumor of the blood vessels now what is the most common site the most common site is lower extremities okay lower limbs the skin of the lower limbs in the skin of the lower limbs you can see this involvement and upon doing the microscopic examination on microscopic examination what you can see the very important thing is the spindle shaped cells spindle shaped neoplastic cells with blood vessels plus rbc inside it 
Okay. Now, if you look here, this is the skin of the lower limb. And the skin of the lower limb, you can see this is the Kaposi sarcoma. This is the classical image given every time in the exam. Okay, these are the these are the examples of Kaposi sarcoma, which are seen in the patients who are having the HIV. And the causative agent of this tumor is HHV8, human herpes virus 8. And if you look at the microscopy, you can see these are all the spindle-shaped cells. Okay, these are all the spindle-shaped cells. Now the spindle-shaped cells, and here and there, you can see these are the vessels. And the RBC are also seen. All these are the RBCs. Okay. So, this is what is seen on the histology or microscopy. Now, after this, okay, I don't want to go into different types of Kaposi sarcoma, endemic type, African type, okay, HIV associated. I just don't want to go into that much detail. Not needed. Now, let's discuss about the malignant. The malignant one. The cancerous one. The cancer of the blood vessels is called as angiosarcoma. Angiosarcoma. Let me write. It's a cancer of what? Neoplasm or carcinoma. It's a cancer. Cancer of what? Cancer of endothelial cells. Endothelial cells. Now, who will get this angiosarcoma? What are the risk factors? The risk factors to get this angiosarcoma is taking certain kind of chemicals like arsenic poisoning. Arsenic poisoning or polyvinyl chlorides. Okay, the plastics, the polyvinyl chloride are certain radio contrast agents like throat trash. Okay, so the throat trash or the arsenic poisoning or the polyvinyl chlorides, if they enter into your body, they can cause cancer of the endothelial cells as the angiosarcoma. Now, if you look under the microscopy, what you will see? You will see atypical. So these are the cancers, right? You cannot identify the cells. So these are the atypical neoplastic cells, which are positive for CD31 and von Willebrand's factor. The CD31 and von Willebrand factor are going to become positive in which study? In immunohistochemistry. So under the immunohistochemistry, these cells, this atypical neoplastic cells, they are positive for the CD31 as well as the von Willebrand factor and definitely it's a cancer, it's a, it's a very aggressive cancer. It's aggressive cancer. So, these are the points which I want you to know. So, with this, the cancer of the blood vessels, the malignant tumor of the blood vessels is also completed. So, just like a, a summary, the blood vessel tumors are divided into three types, low risk, intermediate risk and high risk are the malignant. What are the benign tumors are the low risk tumors? The low risk tumors include the capillary hemangiomas, cavernous hemangiomas as well as the glomangiomas. The intermediate risk includes the Kaposi sarcoma seen in Kaposi sarcoma seen in HIV associated patients. Kaposi sarcoma is because of which virus? HHV8 virus. Now Kaposi sarcoma important point is under the microscopy you will see the spindle shaped cells, spindle shaped cells with the RBCs and the blood vessels. And the last one is the angiosarcoma which is associated uh, with uh, taking the arsenic, with uh, associated with arsenic poisoning or polyvinyl chlorides or taking the like you know radio contrast agents like the thorotrash can cause this angiosarcoma and angiosarcoma it's an aggressive tumor don't forget it's an aggressive tumor and this angiosarcoma under the microscopy you will see the atypical cells which are positive for the CD31 as well as the one willibrand factor right? because these are the something these are the markers these are the markers of the endothelial cells the, on, the endo, on the endothelial cell surface you have CD31 that's why under immunohistochemistry yes CD31 is coming positive as well as one willibrand factor right? because in endothelial cells in the webbel pellet bodies one willibrand factor is present so that's why it's coming positive Okay, so with this, the blood vessel tumors or the vascular tumors topic is also completed. After this, let's discuss about the arteriolosclerosis. Okay, the sclerosis of the blood vessel, different types of sclerosis of the blood vessels. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.